Hello, welcome to the weekly wind up with myself Emma Kirk. Recently we've witnessed an increase in the popularity of women's football and I am glad to say that women's rugby is not too far behind. As a fan of rugby nothing pleases me more than to be able to support women in this sport in particular. Today I'm joined by Lois Forsell who has recently returned from Australia representing her country. She is an amazing ambassador for women's rugby and sport for women in general and she's just signed with Leeds Rhinos from Bradford Bulls. So we're honoured to have her here with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How did you get into playing rugby? Um, quite young, I actually played football before I played rugby. So okay. um, my mum my and dad used to drop one of us off at football, which was me, leave me there, go drop my brother off at rugby, pick me up and then pick my brother back up. Um, and one time we just got there a little bit earlier at East Leeds and said, come on, we're one shot, you're gonna join in. And I took a bit of persuading, but um, I joined in and then I didn't, I didn't look back, I uh, stopped playing football as much and, and focused on rugby. What did you prefer about the sport? Um, I don't know, you know. Um, <laughs> I think I think with with rugby, it's just totally different to anything else. And I think that it were a bit unique that I was the only girl that were there. I think I quite enjoyed that because um, it were different and not many people could say that they played rugby. And we're looking now, we're getting to a point where a lot more girls do yeah. play. But um, I still do find it hard to put my finger on why we all love it. But... Um, it is just I think the biggest sell for me is that you know it's, it's totally unique to any other sport that, that girls can do out there or, or, or men I guess and um, there's just being just testing yourself in all different aspects and being able to play regardless of your size and size and ability is great. I think the technical skill for women yeah. shows through more I think you know because obviously you don't have the same physicality so when you were watching you in the, the World Cup, that was yeah. quite obvious. But some of those people you were playing against were quite big. How do you yeah. manage? Because obviously <laughs> they're, they're, they're big girls, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's that's something that we're speaking about at Leeds and, and about how we can be the best we can be in England. Because when we get to the international stage, there is some factors that are always not going to be on our side, like yeah. playing against New Zealand. Are we ever yeah. going to be as big as them? <laughs> and, you know, as women, it's hard. You know, I think you do get some, some men who are a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, but for women, it's it's sort of a bit di more difficult to, to get to that stage and um, not as not as natural maybe. Um, but yeah, the Kiwis this time round were 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 huge. They just I think they had probably about thirty kilograms heavier than us, and yeah. you know that showed up to half time. It was it was only ten points in the game, and then you know when when they're constantly running at you, it gets a lot a little bit more yeah. difficult. So um, but yeah, it's but I think that the thing is, especially at grassroots level, that I say to the girls in the in the classes that I teach is that you know, you can be small like Robbie Burroughs or you can be, you know, big like, you know, Brett Ferris or Jamie Jones Buchanan or you can be in that middle middle ground like Danny Maguire. Um, everyone's got something to offer and it's not a sport where if you're if you're fast you play or if you're slow you play. It's if you, whatever you bring, you bring to the team and, and it'll be appreciated. Do you find that you get any kind of negativity? Because obviously it's pre predominantly a male sport, isn't it? Um, you know, growing up, people would say, "Oh, you know, once you get a bit older and you start, you know, you start to go out with your mates and stuff like, you won't play." Or, um, you know, there is, you know, there is various stigmatisms attached to the sport. But I think that today that's changing a lot. And I mean, if you look at our under 19s academy that's coming through, there's, there's there's girls who are slight, there's girls who are bigger, there's girls who are fast. There's, there's so many different people playing the sport now, especially girls. And, you know, a lot of the time in schools, I find that the dancers and gymnasts actually quite like it because the discipline that they've got of being strong and being flexible and being, you know, all those little skills, it actually makes them quite good rugby players, which you wouldn't think they'd be the first ones to stand out, but they are. But as a sport in general, it's one of the things, you know, you have to have strength, speed, you yeah. have to have ball skills, yeah. you have to have yeah. good eye, you know, coordination. And, and I think that makes you a complete athlete doesn't it yeah yeah you need to you need to have a you know kind of an all-round package kind of thing um, and obviously certain positions you know you, you need more of, of, of speed to I guess to be a back mm. than you do a forward and things like that um, but but yeah I think it is you know a sport that that most people can get involved in and the girls now are starting to realize how you know how much it, it can offer and but just how fun it is really and how 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 it makes it, how it makes them feel. So we're always telling women that we want to be strong, independent, and things like that. And rugby is a sport where you can show that you are strong. And it's not just in a, you know, it's not just in the, the way of physicality, but it's in the mindset. So yeah. I might, you know, get tackled, but next time I'm going to go and try not to, or I might miss a tackle, but I'm going to. And you know, I think that it adds that it is a physical contact sport to that, that mindset of I am going to be strong and I am going to uh, push on. So obviously coming back from Australia, yeah. you you are now more of a known 
athlete, I think, H as a role model, you know, how, how can you encourage, I mean, I know that you're doing that in part, but yeah. how do you try and encourage people to play? Um, I think for me, like, nothing that I changed before I went out will, will, will change. I've been doing this job about four or five years, and for me, it's just always just giving the girls an opportunity to play um, and speaking well of the sport because it's given me a lot. I mean, I started at East Leeds just by chance, picking my brother up, and it's given me a career work-wise, yeah. playing-wise, yeah. um, and a lot of confidence and, and, you know, a lot of opportunities to come with it. So I think it'll be the same that, you know, if they enjoy it, to keep going. Yeah. That is the biggest thing, just keep enjoying it, yeah. um, and the success and rewards will come off, off the back of that. So tell me, where were you when you got that call to say you were playing for England? Um, I was at home actually. I think he tried to ring me and I'd missed his call. I, I was at work, so I'd missed his call, um, and then he, he rang me at home. Um, I always just leave the room whenever, whenever you get that call. It's like you're looking <laughs> at it, right? Um, and I was sat at the dinner table um, and I had the conversation with him and, and, and spoke to him. But it's you can always remember all the all the phone calls. I just remember I was take it out of the room, get it, because you don't know if it's going to be good news, bad news, and if yeah. it's bad news, you certainly don't want to be stood in front of people. But obviously um, it was good news. Yeah, it was good news. <laughs> it was the best news, and and yeah, it was. You got that call, and it just kind of made you a little bit more excited for. You obviously were training hard, anyways, but it's yeah. sort of like you knew that it was definitely happening then, and it it made you push on and, and work just as hard as you had, but be really excited. And when you walked out onto the pitch for the <laughs> first time in that England kit, what? What did that feel like? It's just pride. Um, yeah. It were we played against uh, Papua New Guinea in the first game, and it were a later <laughs> kick off. Yeah, and uh, it were quite an uh, exciting game for all of us because the start of the kick off, you know, the kick off of a World Cup for us, uh, for our campaign, but also a team that not many of us have played against mm. before. If 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 not, no, no, none of us will have done. Um, I was thinking about the girls who went to the previous World Cup, but uh, they didn't take part. This was their first World Cup, so none of us have played against them. So it were kind of we didn't know what to expect, but. When you get on, our coach always says to us, you get on the pitch, um, you know, our, our national anthem's on and you think about, you know, your family at home, your, your other halves and, you know, all the things that are emotive to you and, yeah. and what, what makes it good for being there. And then when theirs comes on, you think about what you're going to be doing in that game and a bit of visualisation of, of, you know, how you want the game to go and what you want to bring, bring to the team. Tackling fuel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we needed some of that that game because we started off slow, but, well, for the whole tournament, yeah, actually. Yeah, the first we, uh, half was a little Yeah, bit we started off slow, and I think, you know, some of us might have been still on the plane, which you can't, you can't um, complain with. We only had, I think, about six days before we had our first kick-off. Mm -hmm. So it were, um, it were, it were all, um, you know, a quick turnaround, but the girls dealt with it really, really well and conducted themselves fantastically. And in that game, we got the result, and we were happy with that, just to, just to get out there and, and, and yeah. kick on. I mean, listening to you, it sounds like a really inspirational kind of event for you. Yeah. If somebody else is watching this and they think, you know, I want that, how, how do they go about starting playing? What they want want to get into that sort of stage yeah. of rugby league. Well, so just to start playing is um, join your team. So I know in Huddersfield now and Huddersfield St. Joe's have got a team. They've got a women's team. Okay. Um, and there's other teams, so Bradford Bulls, they've got a team if you want to play in that, that Super League level, which is the elite. And um, the one thing I would say is don't count yourself out of being at that level. We, we've got a woman who came for um, the trials at Leeds Rhinos. Um, well, actually, she came to a taster session because she'd never played before. Um, and I said to her, you must, you haven't is on, you have played before. <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm just a, like, I've just watched all my life. Like, I've really yeah. enjoyed it. And we couldn't believe it. We said, right, you've done really well. We want you to come to the open access trials, which were for players who played and, and do play. And she, she held her own and, and we've selected her off the back of that because she were, she, were, she were very good. And I think that someone who was at that level could probably, you know, they've never had any coaching. Imagine how good they can yeah. be. Um, so if you just get involved, there's, there's plenty of clubs out there. You can go on the RFL websites or, you know, look at your, contact your local clubs like Bradford, like Huddersfield and, and let them know they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Well, thank you so much for coming onto the show. It's all right. I'm sure you're going to have an amazing career and Hopefully. I can't wait to watch you next season. Yeah, definitely. If you want to contact us about this or any other matter, please do so by the usual means. I'm Emma Kirk. Goodbye for now.